Hi, my name is Andrew Sadovoy, and this is Keeping Text Inside the Boundaries for the course An Introduction to Interactive Programming in Python by Joe Warren, John Greener, Stephen Wong, and Scott Rixner. So what I'm talking about in this course is uh, we saw in one of the lectures um, a simple screensaver, and you'll notice that the text here, part of the text is displayed off the screen. It says Python is fun, but we only see Pyth or even not even the H is this. We only see Pyte really, and a little bit of H. Um, so what I did was I, I wrote some code to um, to make it so that the the text is not doesn't go out. No matter what message you type up here, um, provided it's not any wider than the width of the canvas, um, the text won't go won't be displayed off the screen. And no portion of the text will be displayed off the screen. So. Um, so the issue is that part of the text is going off the screen. So what can we do to prevent this? Well, we need to make sure that the starting position of this of the string itself uh, plus the length of the string doesn't exceed the width of the canvas. So if this is the starting position and the length of the text is you know goes all the way over to you know uh, goes off the screen, so then it, we we want to make sure that the uh, that this we can't use this starting position. We want to start further back so that so that the endpoint is over here, um, rather than being off the screen. And we can do a similar thing with height uh, for this video. That's I'm going to deal with that really simply. So. So breaking down the problem, uh, we need some way to measure the text length. Uh, to do that, we need to loop through the characters in the string, and uh, we'll need some scale for each character, uh, and its width and its height. Uh, there are some complications. Um, the height of a string is governed by the tallest character in that string, and for simplicity, we'll assume that there's at least one uppercase character in the string, and we'll use that height. Uh, width of a character is more complicated in that there are several factors that can uh, that, that must be considered. Um, these can include you know, things like font size, font weight, font typeface, um, which can be fixed or varying per character. Um, we have upper or lowercase, um, and of course the character itself, depending on the font face. So for brevity in this video, I'm just going to focus on the letter's case. So. Um, the size of each character varies with the letter case of that character, and for our purposes we'll use a single scale for height regardless of the case, um, but we need a width scale for lowercase and for uppercase. After some experimentation, um, I found that these values seem to work, um, they were acceptable. So, um, Code Sculptor provides no way to determine the case of a letter, so we need to make one. Um, we need a global string to hold the alphabet. That's right here. Notice it's all lowercase. Doesn't matter. It could be lower or upper or a mix. We'll see why in a second. So now I have an is upper function. Uh, and what it's going to do is check if the letter is uppercase. So it gets one letter, C, and it's going to check to see whether C is uppercase. And it does that, in a, we can do that in a lot of ways. What I did was force the alphabet string that we I declared before, um, I force it to uppercase, and then I, I, I use find to see whether C is in it. And uh, C is in it if find returns a value that is not equal to negative 1. Uh, so I just return whether that's the case. Um, and then we have a, a similar problem. We need to check if a letter is lowercase. Uh, so is lower does that. And notice it's almost identical to is upper. The only thing that's different here is that I use the to lower function. Now again, we said that alphabet could be upper or lowercase or whatever. This just makes sure that, that alphabet is lowercase before we check to see whether C is in it. So um, 
We now have enough to be able to measure a string. We have a way of finding a letter's case, and we have a scale for each case. So all we need to do is apply it. And the code to do that, uh, you'll recall that what I said at the beginning was we, we, we need to loop through all the characters in the string, determine its width, and then uh, and get a total for that width. And so this is the code that does that. Text len in pixels. Um, it takes a message. It, it starts off a length value at zero. And then it loops through all the characters in message. And so um, if a character is uppercase, then we're going to increase length by the scale, the horizontal scale for an uppercase character. And uh, if C is lowercase, we're going to scale it by the lowercase value. And um, for any other characters that are neither lower or uppercase, meaning they're not in the alphabet, uh, we'll just use the uppercase scale. And so we'll do that for all the characters in C, and what we'll end up with is the length value will be the, the sum of all of those cases, and we'll just return the int version of that value. And that's really it. Um, so, we have a way to measure text in pixels. Uh, the left and bottom are always the same as the left and bottom coordinates of the canvas. We need to calculate the right and top. We could use globals, but I used functions instead. Notice the top is always the vertical letter scale, and the right is the global width value minus the text length of the global message value. So the width minus the result of calling text length in pixels on this message. So now we look at tick. So tick is, you'll recall that tick calculates a random point at which the text will be drawn. Um, and so we're looking at the original from the, uh, from the lecture. Um, the old version of tick uses zero and the width for the range of the x value and zero and the height for the range of the y value. This is clearly um, not taking into account the text size. So uh, you'll see in a second that our code does that. So here's the new version. In the new version of tick, we use the result of calling right as the maximum for the range used to determine x. And we uh, use the result of calling top as the minimum value for the range used to determine y. Everything else remains the same. And that's really it. So this is not a perfect solution. As I said earlier, there are lots of factors that govern text size. However, I think this illustrates the kinds of things you need to do uh, to work with text. It doesn't really matter uh, much if a screensaver displays text off screen, like I said before. But there are certainly scenarios where changing the text will require measuring the text before drawing it. Uh, one example is the score on the stopwatch game. What happens if your score goes above 10, or goes above 100, or the, the count goes above 10 or 100? You, remember that the value is being displayed in the upper right corner, so if it's, if it's just one character by, you know, it's, it's, it starts off as one char three characters long, but it could easily uh, exceed that, and um, so it's important to be able to take that into account. It's not a requirement for the for the uh, homework, but um, something to to think about for other applications. So I've provided a, a link to my working code, so you can see the whole thing in action. And that's it. Thanks for watching.